Hey, what's up, y'all? So, uh, first of all, I hope everybody's 2023 is going uh, swimmingly. Uh, mine sure is. But, you know, yeah, big news is that I broke my Alfa Romeo Giulia. So uh, let's start with the good news. Right now it's fixed and it's working just fine. However, as you guys could probably tell, I haven't been making videos uh, very often or very consistently for a couple of reasons. One, my Alfa Romeo Julia was down. And uh, two, my schedule has just been absolutely insane. Uh, my work and life schedule and stuff like that. So I apologize for not being um, as prompt with the videos Plus, I just got some awesome camera equipment in so that I'm able to do more videos while I'm driving the car and stuff like that. I've got some cool events planned coming up in the future, so stay tuned as always. Anyway, let's get back to the purpose of this video is to talk about how I broke my Alfa Romeo Giulia. So as you can probably tell, yes, I had the misfire codes, the typical P0363, um, you know, intermittent misfires, random misfires, P0, um, I think 050D, which is um, uh, ignition coil problems, loose connections. Yeah, so I was getting these codes and um, I couldn't really figure out what was going on. And it's a long story, but to, you know, to not waste too much time and giving you all the details, for the last couple weeks, about the last month, I've been getting these codes, right? When I would start the car up in the morning and it would misfire horribly. I'd have to turn it off, uh, break out my laptop in the uh, multi-ECU scan, clear the code, turn it back on. I would just have to continue this process and then eventually the car would run right and I'd be able to drive off and do what I had to do. And eventually it came to a point where um, it just wouldn't run right. I would clear the codes, clear the ECU, and um, the car just, it would still idle like crap. And what I did was I removed all the coil packs and I cleaned them with some Lucas Oil Contact Cleaner. I put them back in and I was like, okay, cool. You know, this should help because I had already replaced them with new spark plugs. I had already replaced the uh, serpentine belt and the car ran like absolute crap. It idled horribly. So I think I killed what was already a dying coil pack or two when I did that. I killed like all four. So um, I went to the Alfa Romeo dealer locally here in Germany and they wanted a thousand dollars, a thousand euro for four coil packs. Four coil packs, OEM coil packs, which are known to fail. I was like, absolutely not. So I went on Rock Auto. I did some research and went with another brand that makes um, OEM coil packs that are at the standard, if not above the standard of OEM. I went with Delphi coil packs and I threw them in and the car is absolutely awesome. She fired right up, cleared all the codes and she runs great. So let's go ahead, jump in the car and talk more about uh, the misfires and uh, the issues I've been having with the Julia. Anyway, it's a beautiful day guys out here in Germany. Garden. Oh, yeah. This car never gets old, to be honest with you. All the problems that, for all the problems that Julia's have, or can have, and all the electrical bugs and little quirks, man, when you accelerate in this car, when you take turns, how this thing hugs the road it, it makes it worth it it genuinely makes it worth it uh, you know you could have almost anything else Mustang Camaro whatever BMW but uh, there's something special there's something magical about the Julia for sure anyway so you know about these misfires um, I was really sweating bullets for like two weeks because uh, that's how long it took for the coil packs to ship from the States all the way over here so I was like I was really betting on the coil packs being the issue and luckily I installed them and um, cleared the codes 
and the car has run amazingly since. And I've driven it for a whole week, a little bit more than a week. I've driven it to work every day, you know, multiple, multiple star stops and startups um, every day, and, and, and I've really had no issues. But I'll say this to y'all out there with this car, um, and you run into these misfire codes, these are the steps that you need to take when that happens, okay? First is gonna, it's just the process of elimination, right? And we start with what's gonna cost you the least first. So make sure that your battery is charged, right? We already know that 99.9% .9 of issues when it comes to the Alfa Romeo Giulia is the battery. It's all the way in the trunk, um, you know, especially if you live in a colder climate, and for whatever reason, all of the electronics that never go to sleep in this car and, uh, and everything, they demand a lot from that battery. And if you're not driving the car every day, and I mean miles, right? Not a, a block or two to work. I'm talking about miles, highway miles, um, where the alternator can really charge the battery. If you're not doing that every day, you know, you're gonna run into issues, um, you know, different random codes that don't make any sense. and eventually you'll probably track them all to the battery was just low and couldn't run the electronics that were needed to do whatever. So check the battery. I, I always say that when you buy this car, you need to buy a battery tender. Like it's that important. Anytime this car is gonna sit for even a day, especially if you're gonna go out of town for a week or if you're gonna take the other car to work for a while, put this car on a battery tender so that you don't have any worries or any issues when it comes time to crank it up and, uh, and drive. Uh, so if the battery doesn't get rid of the uh, misfire issues, the next thing you need to check is going to be um, the spark plugs, right? This is real simple, especially on the um, four-cylinder 2.0 turbo Julia's. Swap the plugs, put in a fresh set of plugs, see if that gets rid of the issue. I said it never gets old. Uh, put in a fresh set of plugs, see if that gets rid of the issue, right? Um, let's put it in regular drive mode. If that doesn't get rid of the issue, then the next thing you need to do are the coil packs. Now you can pay Alpha an arm and a leg for these coil packs. Um, if you want, you can pay the tax on those, the dealership just trying to rake in money. Or you can go to Rock Auto and get the Delphi um, coil packs, which are, uh, it's probably super dark in here. Sorry guys, I'm going in a tunnel right now. Or you can go to Rock Auto and pay, um, you know, for the Delphi ones, which are just as good, if not better, arguably better than OEM, and cost a fraction of the price. Um, there's no reason for you to go pay Alpha, you know, $800 more for what you could get for 200 bucks which is what I paid for all four brand new coil packs from Delphi. If you wanna know, if you're worried about, well, you should get the OEM because OEM is more reliable and it's what they, well, here's the thing, the OEM coil packs failed me. So I didn't really feel good spending another thousand dollars on a product which failed prematurely. And I consider failed coil packs at 80,000 miles, I consider that premature failure. On a modern day car, Coil packs failing at 80,000 miles is premature failure. Coil packs should easily go to 100, 120,000 miles on modern day cars, okay? As always, I do 99% of my own work to my own car. Um, I refuse to go to the dealership and have them do any of this diagnosis and misdiagnosis work on my car. I refuse to do any of that. Um, what I, what I did to my car going through this process would have easily cost me over $3,000 um, anywhere else, right? So that's why, you know, I all I paid was parts, you know. Uh, one uh, part that I forgot to mention when you're going through your quest trying to diagnose misfires is going to be the serpentine belt, okay? I replaced mine. 
I suggest following the manual and replacing this belt at every uh, every 6, 60,000 miles. Um, my belt always looked fine when I would pop the uh, pop the hood and inspect it. The tensioner was within spec, everything like that. There's a little arrow um, on the tensioner, and, and if it gets all the way to the side, you're supposed to replace it. So I never really, I was like, there's no reason to replace this belt. Um, but when it came time to hunt down these misfires, I know that a worn belt has actually been known to cause misfires because it will slip in very minute increments and um, the crankshaft position sensor will read that slippage as misfires in a throw coat. So anyway, I bought a new belt from Alpha. That part was cheap. It was like 30 bucks, 30 euro. Bought that, slapped it in myself. Once again, an extremely easy procedure to do that would cost you hundreds of dollars at Alfa Romeo if you were to take your car there. I did it with some very basic tools that you can buy at the hardware store, you know, automotive tools, right? But my other point is that I looked at my old belt, right? The one that I thought had been, had didn't need replacing, and this thing had dry rotting all over it. It probably had never been replaced. This probably was an 80,000 mile belt that had been on the car since the first owner and I'm the second owner of this car. So um, I'm very glad that I just went ahead and replaced it because when I looked at all the dry rotting and all the cracking in this belt, I was like, wow, yeah, that needed to be replaced. So do that anyway, guys and gals, if you are at 60,000 miles, replace the belt. Do it yourself, have a friend do it, pay to do it. It is just extra insurance, right? It's, it's cheap insurance. And it's one less thing that you have to worry about or um, check, right? It's just one less thing. I've got brand new spark plugs, brand new coil packs, a brand new serpentine belt, and the car's running great. I mean, it's smooth, it fires right up. Like, it fires right up. The car feels better than it did when I first bought it at 24,000 miles, and it has 80,000 miles now. So, um, honestly, so far, a week and, and some change into uh, these new coil packs, I would say that these are probably an upgrade from stock. If you, if you run into the situation where you're getting misfires, your car is high mileage, 70, 80,000 miles and above, I would say just go ahead and uh, on your next oil change, throw in a new set of spark plugs and a new set of coil packs and, uh, and call it a day. And don't, don't go with OEM because you know they're just they're known to fail prematurely and I'm not the only one who has had these issues um, with these coil packs uh, failing way before they really should fail or would fail on any other car. But you know. Such is life with a with a you know a luxury car, an exotic luxury sports car, you know. Um, pros and cons with any vehicle that you get, right? So you know where do I go from here? Pretty much, I'm going to continue to monitor the car. Um, the last thing I'll say about this is that even though the car is fixed now, I still believe that I am. Uh, battling a phantom issue with a worn battery. I do believe that I have a dying battery and you know it's in my best interest and honestly it's in the best interest of anybody with this car to just keep this car on a battery tender every day every night or every other night. Um, the days that go by when I don't do it and the car just sits there always seems to be some issue, either a really sluggish startup or a ghost code or something like that. But when you keep this thing on a battery tender, I mean, it loves you. It rewards you with flawless performance. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna keep it on the battery tender. Luckily, we've got another car. Uh, we've got a Mercedes that is really, you know, our daily. Um, so I can take that at any point in time and sometimes I prefer to take that uh, driving here in Germany um, and then leave, you know, the Julia for the uh, spirited drive and the weekends and stuff. 
but you know, nonetheless. Um, yeah, I think I'm just going to keep it on the battery tender. But other than that, y'all, listen, I'm glad to be back on YouTube, glad to be making videos. I wanted to catch up to speed with why, you know, I hadn't been on YouTube in a while, and, you know, that was the case. My work schedule was really busy, and like I said, the Julia was down for a couple weeks while I was waiting for those parts to arrive from the U.S. But the parts are here now, the car is fixed, she's running great. As you can see in here, she's lovely, breaking necks as usual, and putting smiles on my face. So, what's to come? As far as modifications, nothing really in the, uh, in the short or long term. I just want to drive this car on as many awesome European roads as I can. I finally got my tourist passport, so I'm going to take her to Sweden, Austria, Italy, all those things. I signed up for a gumball in the summer so i'm gonna be making a lot of videos leading up to that and obviously an awesome video covering that gumball we're gonna go down to the stelvio pass um and this is with a group with a bunch of awesome exotic and supercars so i'm honored to be invited to this and to be able to to take part in something like this i'm really really excited and that's coming up later this year uh in the summertime when it's going to be nice and warm I love this stretch of road right here. Woo! Sheesh. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, yeah. So, anyway, guys and gals, you know, thanks for staying tuned as always. Thanks for being loyal followers and watchers. Leave a comment, leave a like. Tell me what's going on with you. Tell me what's going on with your Julia. If you've experienced the same codes, if you've had some of the similar same issues, you know, let me know. Let's talk about it. And and let's let's find solutions and let's troubleshoot, problem solve together. Because you know, this community, this alpha community is only growing and getting more popular day by day. And it's just awesome to be a part of. <laughs> so all right, y'all, until next time, stay modding, drive safe, and I'll see you later.